fundraisers, I'm Don Lego. It's time once again to buckle up for a new episode of Raise Nation Radio, the one and only podcast made to inspire fundraisers like you to continue making impact in our communities, building better tomorrows and exchanging ideas. So whether you're a trailblazer or seasoned pro, you'll pick up the trends that transform your fundraising. And together, we'll dive into lively conversations and we'll chat with industry-leading fundraisers and thought leaders to explore hot-button issues and innovative ideas. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes while we inspire you to embrace the future of fundraising. All right, Raise Nation, let's get going. Welcome back. If you've been with us before, you know that we're over 90 episodes by now. And uh, this is your first time. Well, you have to catch up. You got 90 episodes to listen to. But um, we stream on 10 channels and we're on demand at onecause.com. We're live at the Raise Conference, which takes place annually um, in September. This year, we're going to be at the Country Music Hall of Fame. You have to join us. Um, But we're going to get into a great conversation today. So I'm glad that you're with us. An interesting conversation. To be honest, I kind of am interested to learn myself. So I'm super excited uh, to recommend uh, to, to welcome Annie Tuckman. She's the sales director from a company called Tap cat. And we're going to learn about sweepstakes and how you can grow your fundraising. And to be honest, I need to start with a definition of sweepstakes, but I know we're going to get the 411. So Annie, welcome to Raise Nation Radio. I'm so glad that you're with us today. Yeah. So super uh, glad to be here, Dawn. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we first want to get to know you, if that's okay. Our audience has curious minds. So if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do for TAPCAT, and just maybe whatever you want to share personally so we can get to know you a little bit. Yeah, of course. So um, I'm uh, here at TAPCAT. I've been here for seven years and I'm the sales director, which means I get, I'm get i lucky enough to be able to talk to amazing nonprofit organizations all over the U.S., which I can easily say is a really, really great way to, to spend uh, the 40 hour work week. Um, just, you know, so many passionate people. But um, just personally, I live in Colorado. I'm a... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Typical Colorado girl, love climbing, mountain biking and and getting outside. Um, so, yeah, living in the right place for sure. Yeah, I have it. Have I been to Colorado? Hmm. I don't think so. You think I would remember, but I, yeah. it's definitely <laughs> um, it's definitely a bucket list item for me, you know, to make it out there. So I'll have to knock yeah. on your door when, when yeah, I head over there. Too. Yeah, <laughs> please do. It's a great vacation spot. Yeah, well, sounds like a great place to live too. So um, all good. You can tell us about that. But I want to get into some TapCat stuff, if that's okay with you. Um, oh, yeah. What do we do at TapCat? And can you define really, truly, I'm not kidding. This is a real question. What it, What actually is a sweepstakes? Because I know that's kind of your specialty, but I'm not so sure. Like, I think I know what it is, but I don't know that I know what it is. So wh- what do we do over at TapCat? Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, it is a little confusing in the nonprofit world because I feel like the word raffle and contest, giveaway, drawing, sweepstakes, they're all kind of mingled together. And there is a difference between a sweepstakes and a raffle and kind of all the rest of the world words fit into these two categories as well. So sweepstakes are, um, they are uh, giveaways in that, you know, a nonprofit is uh, choosing a cool prize, um, giving away to their donor base and donors are making a donation for a chance to win. So in that sense, it's really similar to a raffle because we all know raffles really well. They've been around forever. Um, They're always at galas, always at different events. And with a raffle, similar idea, donors are making a contribution for a chance to win some kind of really cool prize. So the main difference here is that with a sweepstakes, there is a no purchase, no need to make a donation for a chance to win. And it's called an alternative method of entry, an AMOE. Because sweepstakes have this piece to them, they are not considered gambling. Oh. Yeah. So the you nonprofits out there who have run raffles, you know raffles are gaming. You do need a license from the state. They are not legal in all 50 states. 
You can, um, you, you know, you need a gaming manager. Uh, you need a lot. There's a lot of red tape around them. So they have their time in place, but they're a little more complicated than running a sweepstakes. And so you just hit a nerve because as fundraisers, we have to remember eight, 12 weeks before our event, submit all of the paperwork that we need to submit to do our raffles and to do them legally and above board and all that fun stuff. And eh, something usually goes wrong in in, in that process or could go wrong, you know, in that process, it's definitely a bone of contention. So, okay. I get the big difference, kind of similar. One is considered gaming. One is not. Mm -hmm. raffles require a donation sweepstakes do not is that right am I with you yeah you're with me yep you're with me so I know for all the fundraisers out there that can sound a little crazy like wait a second I'm trying to raise funds here that's where I was going (laughs) yes I was gonna address the (laughs) elephant in the room wait a minute how am I making money so I'm sure you're gonna tell us Yeah. Yeah. You know, the majority of folks are going to make a donation. That's just how it is. You know, we've been doing this for seven plus years and that's most people are going to contribute to enter into a contest, a sweepstakes. And you're going to get folks who even maybe they made a contribution, but they want to just up their chances a little bit. So they'll put in some, they'll put in a free entry as well. But there's still, you know, we're seeing nonprofits that are raising over, you know, millions of dollars with these sweepstakes. So people still make contributions into a campaign, even when there is the option not to. Okay. You promise? I promise. I pinky swear on that one. Okay. Okay. I'll hold you to that. I'm going to see you at the race <laughs> conference. So we're going to pinky we swear. We can pinky swear that. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So. I'm going to keep addressing that elephant in the room because I'm a fundraiser. Some of our audience knows I run a small nonprofit with my daughter. Um, So this is sounding pretty interesting to me because we've conducted raffles before and they, they failed. I'll be honest with you. You know, they failed. Um, We've tried different things like, you know, only a hundred tickets or only at 50 tickets and then maybe raising the price to entry. And then Mm -hmm. we've tried a bunch of things. So what makes a sweepstake fundraiser successful for a nonprofit? Just going to come right out and hit you the hard question. (laughs) Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, we, we have a lot of tools in place for a nonprofit to be successful. And I mean, the main things, the core of a sweepstakes is, do you have a great prize and is it marketed well? That's really going to be. How do you have a great I, prize and is it marketed well? Yes. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's going to be the bread and butter of a successful campaign and a great prize. And just to start there, you might be immediately thinking, oh, I need to go out and get something really expensive. But it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be it's it really just needs to be a prize that's highly desirable to your donor base or a donor base that you want to promote this to. So, um, you know, prizes in a sweepstakes, they're also on consignment, meaning that a nonprofit doesn't have to go out and purchase this prize either. So unless a prize is donated, they can go um get an agreement with a prize provider. Uh, They're not purchasing anything up front. They're only purchasing the prize at the end of the sweepstakes if they hit their minimum. So there's a safety net here inside of these sweepstakes. You're reading my mind today. Okay, that was the next place I was going to go. So I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, just back to the uh, desirability of a prize, we had a couple of nonprofits do Taylor Swift tickets um, that they were able to acquire. And one of them got uh, that prize donated. Those did amazing. One of them raised $26,000 in just six days. So, and I mean, that's like the highly desirable prize probably of 2023. Uh, so sure. to go see the so Aeros tour. Our chief marketing officer, shared with us Monday that her daughter went to the Twillers with concert and there's this great picture of her like throwing her arms <laughs> up in the air. And um, I think it was definitely a bucket list item for a teenager. And yeah, I, I hear that definitely. Taylor Swift puts on some performance. So oh, go, tw- yeah. go Taylor. Um, yeah. So, all right. I have a million questions. I'm so glad you're with us. So, <laughs> all right. 
so you don't need a gaming license. You advertise it. So I, I think g- dialing back to the basics, you need to know your mm-hmm. audience mm-hmm. and you need yeah. to make sure that you have an item that really resonates with your audience. Doesn't necessarily need to be expensive, but if you're, and if you have people that are interested in golf, well, then it's golf clubs and a golf trip. Yes. If you have people that's interested in concerts, it's Taylor Swift, right? You have to know your audience and let's yeah. not worry about the the ticket value. Let's worry about, is this high demand? Is this interesting? And then you need to market it well. Yes. That's what I heard is a very baseline, basic foundation to your sweepstakes. Yes, exactly. So, you know, we get we get nonprofits that come to us and they might have a donor base that they just want to re-engage and that's their number one goal. Okay. And so we'll work with them to figure out like, okay, what 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 are your donors into? What what are their demographics? What are they, you know, just all the information that they have on their donors to help them choose a prize that would a- accomplish that goal for them to re-engage them. But it's, you know, it's common too that we have nonprofits coming to us and they say, you know, we don't have a huge individual giving program. We want to bring in some new donors. Let's, uh, and we want to use a program to incentivize new donors to come in, learn about our organization and uh, support our mission. So then we might look at, okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe a a different prize will be appropriate for these folks. So there's a couple of different uh, strategies inside of Mm. choosing a prize that can work for uh, different nonprofits and their goals. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, If I'm trying to attract new donors and grow my donor base, I don't necessarily know what would resonate with them. So got to think about that a little. So I see there's some different strategies going on here, but we got a good idea of the basics. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about that minimum. So you mentioned that Nonprofits don't have to necessarily buy anything, put out money. There are consignment options, um, but the consignor, right, is going to want their fee. Mm-hmm. So we have to raise above and beyond that fee to be able to net positive. Yes. How do we do that? Yes. Yeah. So uh, generally inside of a sweepstakes, we recommend a nonprofit sets a minimum if they choose to have a minimum at about two times the cost of the prize. So there, you know, let's say you've got a trip, it's $5,000. You're going to pay for it as the nonprofit. So we would set your minimum at around 12, uh, I'm sorry, 10 10 to 12,000 so that the nonprofit Um, you know, they bring in enough money to pay for the prize, enough money for any marketing expenses they might have. And then they have that, that extra cash that'll be going into their account. Okay. So they're not raising, you know, they're, they're raising more than um, the prize cost to have that, those funds. And what do you do? You just advertise that in the disclaimer or how, how do you handle the communication with the, with your audience? Yeah. So donors are seeing that in the rules. Um, they're seeing it's all over our, our uh, sweepstakes sites, uh, the rules, FAQs, you know, we, we take care of that. Tapcat takes care of that. Oh. Um, so that's pre-populated. So here's the next, uh, you know, we get this question next is what happens if we don't raise our minimum? You know what? You are yeah. totally reading my mind. <laughs> we so didn't script this and yeah. <laughs> every question that I had, you've been, you know, five seconds ahead of me. So that's exactly where I was going. What happens? Yeah. So um, there's still going to be a winner. There's always a winner with a sweepstakes. You know, nonprofits are always making money on these because if the minimum isn't met, let's go back to that $5,000 trip uh, example. Let's say the nonprofit only raises $8,000. The winner then gets a smaller cash prize instead of the trip. So they're going to get 25% of the gross raise. Okay. They get a smaller prize. They're, you know, they're still getting a, a cool prize, a great prize. I, you know, who's not going to want a, a check in the mail, um, even though they may not have won the the grand prize. And then the nonprofit is still walking away with money as well. Okay, so it's a little delicate, you know. I mean, let's hope we hit the minimum. But let's talk about not hitting the minimum first. Mm-hmm. It is a little delicate. Mm-hmm. Do you help with that communication and framing because? I, nonprofits can go into that panic mode. Oh my God, we didn't hit. How does it look? What is it going to look like on social? Do we, how do we spin it 
to to win it? How do we make sure everybody, our donor, like what assistance do you give there? And what advice do you have for nonprofits if they don't hit the minimum? Yeah. You know, I think the big thing here is that they're still giving away a prize. And so, you know, as um, an audience sees that, they see that there's still a winner. Nonprofit is still bringing home funds. So even though they may not have hit their minimum, it's okay. You know, there's there's still positive things happening out of this. They still are putting funds towards their mission. We really see these sweepstakes as tools in a nonprofit's annual fundraising strategy because maybe you don't hit your minimum sweepstakes number one, but there's a good chance you're going to hit it sweepstakes number two. And we see this time and time again because you're building up a base of folks that are interested in that particular prize. They're interested in supporting your mission. So they donate. They're year following you, year. seeing yes. what you're doing. Like, yes. oh, that was pretty cool. They had Taylor Swift tickets. I got to watch them and see what they're going to have, you know, next year kind of thing. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have many nonprofits report to us like, OK, we just closed our sweepstakes. We have donors emailing us asking when the next one is because oh. they're excited. This was fun. They want to participate again. So what's the cadence, do you think? I mean, I'm sure it's different for every nonprofit and you have to know your audience and think about what other communications you have going on and donor fatigue. But can you give us a little idea? Is this once a year, annual, twice a year? What is a typical cadence that you might recommend or what cadence do you recommend in the different scenarios? Yeah, so it kind of depends on uh, the prize because some prizes are um, seasonal. You know, some prizes are uh, we do like ski trips and or summer stuff. Um, we've got a couple of nonprofits doing snowmobiles. So if that's if it's that kind of stuff, it is more. Uh, you know, it, it it does correlate to specific seasons. So they might just want run one a year. Um, we have nonprofits that are running two a year, three a year. You know, it just kind of depends on their goals and uh, what prize they're giving away. Okay. So how do you get the prizes? Yeah. <laughs> so prizes that, you know, I mentioned before, they're on consignment. And um, nonprofits are getting them from a variety of different places. We work with a couple of different prize providers that do like luxury travel, adventure travel, those kind of trips that a nonprofit can easily connect with them, get a prize, plug it into their sweepstakes. And, it, you know, they got something launched in, in 30 minutes. So that's a pretty quick turnaround. 30 minutes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if a nonprofit decided to do like a vehicle, um, it would be up to the organization, that nonprofit to work with a car dealership or a prize provider to get, to get that particular prize. So TapCat can work either way. If the nonprofit has a prize donated or a board member or their own corporate relationships that they have the prize, all good. You can support that. If you need oh, a yeah. prize, your turnkey as well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we'll help however we can to, if a nonprofit has a um, prize in mind and they're curious about maybe some ways they can go about getting that, you know, we're here to support in any way, any way we can. So if we just had ideas and we just came to you and said, okay, I really want to do this. Take me A through Z, help me source. You can, your complete turnkey service. Is that right? Uh, I, I mean, we, you know, we're here to support as in we've seen other nonprofits do this. We've been through the process with other nonprofits as far as hearing how they've been successful in securing that prize. Um, we just don't go out and represent anyone's organization. So we see it as a really valuable uh, piece of the um, program that a nonprofit is going out and they're creating a relationship with a particular partner or sponsor. Mm -hmm. And so that is, is uh, um, unique to their nonprofit. Okay. Because also, you know, a nonprofit can go out, they can get a, an agreement with a partner or a sponsor, and that partner or sponsor might help with some of their marketing. And that is a huge, huge help to these organizations as well to get that free promotion on their sweepstakes. And then it's a win, win, win for sure, yes. because the oh, corporate yeah. partner is getting their 
exposure for their corporate social responsibility. And so everybody's winning in that case. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I yeah. think I need to hear a success story without maybe, you know, sharing any particular nonprofit. Can you walk me through maybe um, a success story of a smaller nonprofit? Let's go in that direction and what they did, how they did it and what the outcome was. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we have a a smaller organization that's actually based here in Colorado and back to the corporate sponsor piece, they had a corporate sponsor that also, um, they provided the prize. So it was a big win for them because they uh, got that prize donated, but the corporate sponsor basically took over the sweepstakes, did a ton of promotion oh. for them. And I know this is the dream s- scenario. That's for okay. Sure. <laughs> and but it's got, inspiring. So we yeah. would need, it's good to hear it. You know, any, really anything's possible with these sweepstakes is what we've seen. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've seen some pretty incredible, uh, incredible things happen with these. So that organization, you know, it helped them grow their list huge. I mean, they brought in so many new donors. They got in front of an audience that they may not have been able to reach before all giving away uh, what turned out to be at the end of about a $10,000 prize. And and they raised about 150,000 from that. Oh my God. I had no idea. That's the number you were going to. (laughs) Yes. Wow. And so it's not just the fundraising, but it's also a new audience that they could now um, convert maybe to volunteers, yeah. loyal oh, donors, yeah. and and all that oh, stuff yeah. that we do when we steward our our donor database. Um, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I'm ready to do a sweepstake. Can we just <laughs> exit yeah. this podcast and jump into the tab? Cast? So yeah. let's talk about the services and the, mm-hmm. the software. Is it a dashboard? Help me understand the services and solutions that TapCat offers. Yeah, so um, TapCat does have a dashboard that a nonprofit will be able to use with a couple different features in there that will help an organization be successful with their sweepstakes. You know, we just do sweepstakes. So we're really focused on niche. Yes, what tools are going to make a nonprofit successful? What's working for some nonprofits and, you know, what's not working and how do we guide nonprofits to? in the right direction so that they are meeting their minimum and they are bringing in new donors and having these successful campaigns. Wow. So, and it, you know, it's really, really simple to use. You'll be able to draw your winner right there in your dashboard and post that on your sweepstakes site. Oh, um, for the sweepstakes sites, we do take care of all the rules and regulations as well as the FAQs. Um, we've got a tool so a nonprofit can embed the sweepstakes into their, uh, you know, wh- whichever uh, website provider they're using so they can have that right on their site. And, um, you know, it's it's so easy. Donors come on, they learn about the prize, they learn about the nonprofit, and then they can quickly and easily make a donation. And it's our whole system is automated, making it really easy for donors and really easy for nonprofits as well. There's a great experience all the way around. Um, and then you can embed it into your website. That, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah. So um, is it a subscription based or solution that you would acquire for six months, a year, or is it a one and done or as you go? How, how does how does that all work? Yeah. So TapCat charges a transaction fee. And most of our sweepstakes are, you know, they're usually running for a minimum of three months, or I'd say three to six months for prizes like adventure travel or, um, you know, bikes for the family or Taylor Swift tickets, those kind of prizes, bigger prizes, cars, conversion vans, motorcycles, those can run all the way uh, seven months, all the way up to a year. So those are longer campaigns than, uh, you know, some of our typical fundraising campaigns are. So it's much longer than a raffle, typically a sweepstakes. Yeah. And that's uh, partly due to that raffles are, um, the, the time is restricted by states and, and raffles, you know, it's, it, they are regulated at a state level. So every state has different rules as to how rough the raffle can be run. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. I'm getting really, all right. I need more information. Where am I going? Like, how do I get in touch with you and TapCat? And I'm, you're, you're, you're really getting me fired up here about the possibilities. I didn't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just 
How do I get in touch with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, best way to get in touch with us is to visit our website and there's uh, uh, options on there to, to get a hold of us. Okay, so we're going to get that all in the show notes. I'll get your contact information and Tapcat and your social outlets. We'll we'll drop that all into the uh, show notes. And um, great, this sounds great. pretty, really, really exciting. Um, I'm ready to like start my first uh, sweepstakes. Yeah, um, let's do it, Don. Okay, you know what? I'm <laughs> going to take you up on that. So we're going to see you at the race conference in September. Yes, yes we'll be there. super excited. So you'll be at the sponsor pavilion. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. yes. And some of your team will be there. Who who else is going to, will you be there? Are you coming? Annie? Uh, yes, I'll be there. I'm going to have Allison with me and we, this is our first year at Rays. We are very, very excited. Um, we've heard such great things and um, we're really looking forward to, to checking it out and to hanging out in uh, Nashville, right? Yeah, we're going to do some line dancing. Well, let me yeah. tell you, you're going to love this audience. Our fearless fundraisers are just Fun, fearless fundraisers is what how we should really uh, coin them. But yeah, Nashville is such a great backdrop as as is the Country Music Hall of Fame. We're so glad that you're going to be there and that you're sponsoring all of the great content um, from Ray's and that you can be able to share um, a little bit more about sweepstakes, with, you know, with the audience. So that's another way we can get in touch. And you might have a few surprises I hear too. You don't have to reveal them now, but I heard there might be some surprises going on. Is that right? Yes, that is very true. Um, I, we're not ready to reveal the, uh, reveal it yet, but um, be sure to stop by our booth because we will have something very special going on at Ray's. Well, I love the cliffhanger. I love yeah. the, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's all it's all sounds exciting. Well, this is great. So where did um where did the name come from? I, I've got to know before I let you go. Where did the name come from? <laughs> Who founded it? Tap Cat? Like I had to ask you, is it Top Cat? Is it Tap Dancing? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> How did this all and who and who founded it? Where did it all start? Because it's yeah, so, so niche. I mean, you really take your time to do something really, really, really well, which is what I love. But give me the history. Yeah. So founders are uh, Steve Volk and Wendy Volan. And uh, Wendy Volan is our current CMO. She came up with the name Tap Cat. And uh, she's got a great story behind that. You're actually going to have to ask her about it. I'll, I'm oh, going to leave you with another cliffhanger. Another there. cliffhanger. Uh, reason there's to a, re- reach out. Yeah. Yeah. There's a <laughs> story behind Tap Cat. Yes. Okay. Um, we happen to all be dog people too right now on the team. So we got cat in the name. It's spelled with a K, but um, pretty heavy duty dog people here. We call it tap dog or you know, rebrand <laughs> dog. or something yeah, it like that. Roll off, the, roll off the tongue is quite as well. Yeah. Well, um, this is when, super fun. I'm yeah, sorry. Wendy, oh, Wendy and Steve were both in the nonprofit world. So Steve was a executive director at a organization that was running a raffle and, and they were just super frustrated by the complexity of it. So it once is. They found yeah. The, yeah. Super complex. Um, once they figured out this sweepstakes model, they moved to it, to, uh, to it, started raising a lot more funds and were able to take their sweepstakes national. Um, and then nonprofits just started reaching out and wanted to use the software. And so TapCat was was born from that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can see because you're right. As soon when you opened and said it's not game, well, boom, a light bulb went off. It's not considered game. I'm like, wait, what? There's yeah. the paperwork <laughs> involved. Um, yeah. Because I've been there, done that, and um, I'm actually excited uh, to use it myself. Um, and then Raise Nation, you can ask me about it. But um, yeah. Yeah, this great. has been so delightful, Annie. I'm just so glad that you joined us and that you're going to be meeting all of our Raise audience You know, at mm-hmm. the Raise conference. We're going to have to keep in touch, share some success stories. What are some of the hot items right now that people should be thinking about? Yeah. Um, you know, always cars do really well. I know it's a big, uh, you know, it's kind of a big undertaking. It's a bit of a commitment for a nonprofit, but, um, cars do well, motorcycles do well, um, experiences do really, really well, especially if it's something unique, like getting to go again, going back to the Taylor Swift, cause that is, uh, just done. We're uh, plugging Taylor fun. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, like unique prizes, like pieces of jewelry do well, you know, it's really back to those highly desirable prizes is, is key to this. 
Okay. And you can do some consulting based on the strategy or the goals of the organization, whether it's yeah. the engaging donors or reigniting their fundraising or looking for new, you're going to have a little different strategy um, direction. Is that right? Yeah, that's so true. And we love doing that. You know, it's sweepstakes are so fun because they're so inclusive. Everybody gets to participate. It's not like a auction where you need someone to raise their hand for 10 grand. And it's not like a raffle. Sometimes raffle tickets can start at a hundred, a hundred dollars. And um, with a sweepstakes, most of our sweepstakes start at $25. So it's a way that everybody can participate. If they can't afford to go to your gala, they can't afford to go to the golf tournament. They can, uh, you know, potentially afford to participate in this and be able to support and play along as well. I just had another light bulb moment because you're really eliminating any barrier to entry. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. This is fun. Oh, we're yeah. going to have some fun. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I think we have time for one more question. I can't believe I talked, uh, we talked about sweepstakes for so long, but this is definitely educating <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad that I'm in the know now, but what I'd like to ask your advice mm-hmm. for our audience, what's the best way to market their sweepstakes? Mm-hmm. What, do, what do you recommend there? Yeah. You know, I think um, email is still the best way to, oh. to market a campaign. And um, this is where those partners and sponsors can get really involved in your sweepstakes without having to make a financial contribution. Because if they're willing to send this out to their customer base, or maybe they've got a big bank of employees, they can promote this too. That is so, so incredibly helpful. And that's where we see the most conversions. You know, social media is great. It's a great uh, tool for awareness and, you know, we'll, you'll see conversions there as well, but email is still number one uh, when it comes to promoting a sweepstakes. Wow. That's interesting. I would have thought you would have said social uh, right off the bat, but um, very interesting. And I think what I also love about it, another light bulb moment is that not only are you eliminating all barriers to entry, but you can really serve any purpose, whether you're acquiring or trying to engage, or it really is multi-purpose to have, to have a sweet stakes. And then you could time it with a certain time of year for the holidays or the giving season. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's just so much fun that we can have together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's wow. fun to tie these into holidays and uh, theme um, too. Yeah. For sure. Um, And then you find that the momentum is really good um, for a three, four month. You can really keep that momentum going. Yes, definitely. And we have tools um, that that we use to help keep donors engaged, uh, keep people donating, keep people interested because you're right, you know, sending out an email every month, just saying, Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're doing this gets a little old. Oh, I'm curious. We might have to have you back and talk about that again, because I'm curious. I know as a donor, if I was entering a sweepstakes, but then it was, I knew it was three, four months later. How do you keep me going? Like, is there a leaderboard too? like how people are doing? Because maybe I would just buy another ticket. Is that... Uh, no, because, you know, we we um, respect donors privacy on here. So we're never showing who's donating into the sweepstakes. I mean, for the uh, fundraising amount. Is oh, there... for the fun- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see how much has been raised. Total amount. Got it. So you can yeah. follow along. Oh, yeah. Super yeah. Super exciting. Well, you're going to hear from me. I'm sure you're probably going to hear from a lot of our uh, audience. I will get all of this in the show notes. Um, I promise. So for all of you listening out there and being like, oh, I got to talk to Annie. I got to talk to Tapcat. Don't worry. Just read the show notes um, and then come to raise and you'll be able to um, meet Annie and and the team in person and um, hmm, find out what that surprise is all about. Yeah. I'm fearless fundraisers. I'm so sorry, but that's all we have time for today. I know you want to keep talking sweepstakes because I want to keep talking sweet sweepstakes, <laughs> but the conversation will continue. Thank you for listening today. We hope you enjoyed the topic. It's super exciting and another way for you to um, engage donors, acquire new ones and have fun with fundraising. Please tune in for a new episode release every Thursday at 1230 p.m. That's Thursday, 1230 p.m. Eastern time, new episodes of Raise Nation Radio. 
But in the meantime, listen to all the shows on, on the podcast. Follow the channel that you like best because you'll get notifications about all of our new guests. And if you're a fundraiser and would like to have your mission featured on our show, please reach out. We love um, having our nonprofit voices um, and hearing your stories. Fundraisers are doing amazing things to build better tomorrows for our communities. All of your stories are awe-inspiring. We want to get them on Raise Nation Radio. I would like to thank our sponsor, One Cause, for making this episode possible. One Cause is driving the future of fundraising with easy-to-use software solutions that help nonprofits connect with donors. Check it out at onecause.com and visit the resource tab on the homepage for a broad catalog of content that hopefully you'll find helpful. Huge, huge shout out to Annie Tuckman from TapCat um, for sharing a very expert, authentic voice and a very niche fundraising tool that I think is going to make a lot of us successful. Annie, thank you so much for being with us today. I so enjoyed our conversations. Thank you for educating me. I now understand what a sweepstake is. Um, but I have to ask, just like we ask all of our guests, any last words of inspiration for our audience? Yeah, you know, I'm in the uh, middle of rereading Darren Hardy's uh, Compounding Interest, which I'll sum it up for you in a sentence here. It's just persistence is key. And I think that's a good, good way to live personal and work life. Oh, well, we'll get that in the show notes too. I mean, we're all avid book lovers here at One Cause Nation, and I know most of our audiences too. So thank oh, you great. for sharing that. Well, I am going to see you. I want you to have a really good summer, drive a lot of sweepstakes and a lot of fundraising <laughs> for a lot of great causes out there. But then we'll connect again um, in Nashville. We're going to be doing some two-stepping and we're going to find out what that surprise is all about. And how we got the tap cat name. So yeah. I'll be at your booth. I'll be the first one. Okay. Let me hear it. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me today, Don. This was fun. Yeah. I had a great time too. Uh, Raise Nation Radio. That's a wrap. Until next time, I'm Don Lego. This is Raise Nation Radio. You stay fearless out there. Oh.